Good morning, friends, and welcome to day three of our morning devotions. Uh, do make sure you are comfortable, grab yourself a Bible, and um, before we uh, look at our text this morning, let's just take a moment to um, just bring our, our, our day to the Lord and uh, just to bring our focus on Him. So the words are going to come up on the screen and we can say together. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Let's just take a moment of silence with the Lord. Let's say it together. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. This morning we're looking at a, a man named Jabez and uh, you may have never heard or have recognized the name Jabez before. Well, you'll find him in one of the, the least read sections of one of the least read books in the Bible, in 1 Chronicles 4 verses 9 to 10. And if you have a look at the passage that you'll, you'll see, the first, uh, well, 141 verses are taken up with the official family tree of the, of the Hebrew um, um, tribes, going through thousands of years of Israel's return from captivity. It, it is not the most uh, exhilarating and gripping part of the Bible, but after f 44 names into the chapter, a story suddenly breaks through that I'm going to read to us in uh, verses, chapter 4, verses 9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God of Israel, to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. And then in the next verse, it just carries on. The roll call of names carries on. And as if nothing has happened, it's something about Jabez that caught the historian who was writing this to say, whoa, whoa, just to pause, to take breath, to say, hey, I want to just stop here to tell you a little bit about this man because he stands head and shoulders above all those who have gone before him. And you can search the Bible from beginning to end and you won't find anything more about Jabez than these two verses. So what we know is that things started pretty badly for him. He was born into pain. Uh, he prayed an unusual one-sentence prayer and his life ended extraordinarily well. And the outcome can be traced to, to this simple prayer, this direct request to God that, that changed his life and left a permanent mark in the history books of, of um, Israel. It says this in his prayer, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil. At first glance, these, these requests don't sound that uh, startling, um, remarkable, but under the surface, you'll find that each of these requests runs in a complete opposite direction to how most of us think. I'm going to focus on the, the first aspect of that, which is, oh, that you would bless me indeed. But I do encourage you to look at this prayer. I've been looking at it pretty much daily for the last month or so and just been impacted by it. It is a remarkable prayer. But I'm, just as I say, I'm going to look at the first part today. Now, imagine you are on a spiritual retreat and you've been partnered up with a, a mentor who's in their 70s and uh, the morning uh, you get up, you go to your shower and you walk past uh, your mentor's room and you see just the, the door is slightly ajar. He's going down on his knees. He's beginning to pray and you, you're inquisitive. You want to find out what he's saying. So you listen. You know, will he pray for 
for revival? Will he pray for all well, peace? Will he pray for you? But instead, what you find out is that he prays this. O oh Lord, I beg you first and most this morning to please bless me. Now, you may be a bit shocked by what you've heard, such a selfish prayer. You walk off to the showers and as you are uh, changing the temperature of the shower, it suddenly hits you and you're surprised you haven't thought of it before. Great men and women of faith think differently to the rest of us. You go down for breakfast and then you're, at that point, you are more certain than ever before that, that, that the reason some men and women stand out more than others is that they think and they pray differently to those around them. Now, is it possible that God wants you to be more selfish in your prayers, to ask for more and more of what the Lord has for you? My kids, they ask me for things all the time and sometimes I let them have what they want but other times I'm saying guys don't it, it, it don't keep asking um, you know don't be so greedy think of others don't be so selfish with your requests and as we grow older some of us you know most of us stop asking like that and you know that's on the whole quite good but when it comes to prayers we uh, you know, asking for God's blessing in yourself is not as self-centered act as it, as it might first appear, but a supremely spiritual one and exactly the request our Father in heaven longs for us to, to request. Before though we can ask for God's blessing, it's good for us to know what that means. And uh, to bless in a biblical sense means to ask for, a, for an impart of supernatural favor in, in a situation. So when we're asking for God's blessing, we're not asking him for to do things that we could ultimately do in our own strength. We are asking him, we're crying out for the wonderful unlimited goodness that only God has the power to know and to give us. This kind of riches uh, is what the writer in Proverbs uh, talks about in Proverbs 10 verse 22 when he says this, the Lord's blessing is our greatest wealth. All our works add nothing to it. I also want you to just notice how uh, Jebus doesn't dictate to God what kind of blessing that he wants. I think often we, we can think that's what we're meant to be doing here, but you know, it's not, I want a new car or I want you know a new you know, new land or new clothing or new kind of uh, to be to be wealthy. He left it up to God to decide. The Jabez blessing focuses on wanting nothing more and nothing less than what God desires to give us. And what happens when we seek God's blessing in our lives? Well, your life will be marked by miracles. How do I know? Well, we, we see these promises in the Bible and I've seen it in my life as well. Suddenly there are no more obstructions in the way and we begin to, to move in the direction that God has for us. We're praying for what God desires for. But there is a catch. What if I was to tell you that God desired to give you 23 blessings today? but you only received one. What would you think were some of the reasons for that? Well, Jesus says in Matthew 7 verse 7, ask, promised Jesus, and it will be given to you. James tells us, you do not have because you do not ask, in James 4 verse 2. Even though there is no limit to, to God's goodness. If you don't ask him for his blessing yesterday, you didn't get all that we were supposed to get. That's the catch. If you don't ask for God's blessing, then you will miss out on the good things that he has for you. So today, tomorrow, every day, Ask for God's blessing, his supernatural favor on your life. 
You know, we are children of God. We cannot out ask God. We cannot out receive what he has for us. So let us receive everything, everything the Lord has for us today and going forward. So let us respond uh, right now by praying the, the Jabez prayer. And I wanna, I'm gonna leave some space between each of those little points and um, those little prayer requests for us to, to make that personal to ourselves right now. So let's pray together. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me. And that you would keep me from evil. Amen. Let us uh, just finish our time together by saying uh, a concluding prayer as we uh, finish and go about our day. The words are going to come up on the screen. Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.